Okay, here are a couple examples of the run cards used by the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, the one on the top here with the single digit box, this is obviously one of the older ones. Uh, gives you some locations uh, where these street boxes will be located. Uh, about middle of the line here, you see that at one point they actually customized them instead of the generic run cards, they actually said City of Pittsburgh. And these ones here, if you see, they, they wrote FB beside the box number. That was for the period in history whenever the city actually had a fire boat. And that FB means the fire boat was due on that box. It must have been along the river somewhere. Uh, lastly, these fairly newer cards here with an M in front of them in a 9 series. Those were the city master boxes which were located in the buildings and tied into the building's alarm. For example, uh, 984 was the Hayes Army Ammunition Plant. And 9522 was for Children's Hospital. Okay, we're going to talk uh, briefly on the evolution of the fire boxes in the city of Pittsburgh. This particular box here is on what's called a pedestal harp which is the top part that mounts onto a street pedestal and stood about seven foot tall. The back box on it, the black box, is actually a cable box that would have the junction points in it and all the wire connections. And this was the cover door for it. The city actually had them customized uh, at one point from the 20s to about the 40s where they actually said the city of Pittsburgh cast into the game wall box. Uh, this box here, number 625, is one of the first series of boxes that were used by the city. Uh, this style of box was from around 1880. Basically it was a blank face door, there was no key. The citizen or a trusted business owner that lived nearby the box would have the key. And in a lot of cases, a lot of the cities would put a sign on the door that would say, or a sign near the box that would say, for the fire box key, go to this address or go to this business. Uh, when they put the key in and open the door, there would be the instructions on how to pull the hook down. And the lock itself, you see the small keyhole inside here, that's called a trap lock. When a citizen would put their key in, it would become trapped in there until the fire department showed up with another small key to release it. Kind of a deterrent for false alarms. So this box here, like I said, this is an old one. This is 1880. Uh, the hook on the door, when you pulled it through, this mechanism over here would actually lift up the weight inside of the box. And as you can see, you see in there behind the hook, it says the game wall company with a patent date of 1878 and January of 1880. So this is, this is called an 1880 vintage weight driven secker mechanism or a weight secker box. Here's the weight that hung on there, it was a big lead weight. And the top of the box still intact in this box is the original wooden block that was up there. So when they pull the hook, this weight will go up, hit the top of that block, and then the ring itself will pull the box. And they also had a uh, manual tapper at the bottom to communicate back with the central office. We're moving on to a little less common box, but these were in parts of the city. Primarily the part that used to be Allegheny City on the north side of the river. Uh, this box number 16 actually wasn't on the Allegheny City system. Uh, for a while the city of Pittsburgh, when, around the turn of the century when they merged with Allegheny City, they were maintaining two fire alarm offices, the original city office and the original Allegheny City office. So there was two independent systems on either side of the river and the stations that ran mutual aid actually had, uh, they had ticker tapes and bells in their station from both systems. So they could be called either side of the river. And this is an add-on, this, this uh, key guard. These didn't come with these boxes. These were from around 1800 or 1880 to 1900. And obviously that was prior to the 1907 invention of the Cole key guard. However, uh, this Allegheny City at some point in the life of this box added the key guard to it to prevent the key from getting broken off and I decided when I restored it to keep the key guard on there since that's the way the city used it. So we'll open this up, the glass out of the way so I don't break it. This is a, a number four sector box is what it's called and you can see it's actually a lot, they're a lot smaller than the full size fire alarm boxes and they were a little bit cheaper that's why the smaller towns like Allegheny City you chose to use these boxes back in the day and this is very simple uh, it's a sector box that winds as you pull it you hear it pull the spring in there and then you put it up and it'll, it'll spin the mechanism inside and that's a very very crude mechanism that is the interfering pipe so if you have multiple boxes going on the same system they would actually interfere with each other that's why a lot of these boxes are used by smaller cities and smaller systems 
Okay, so the weight sector mechanism, like I said, ran from 1880 until uh, just after the turn of the century when the instructional door box came out. And you can see here now, this is a first generation instructional door box from right around or just prior to 1916. And you can see there's a lot of clutter of instructions on here with the extra words, the, included. Uh, and it actually says hook instead of handle. That's an indication of an earlier box. And it is cast iron. still has a New York maker mark on it, so definitely an earlier box. These doors here were the first doors that incorporated the uh, Cole key guard on here. These came out around 1906-1907 and were an add-on to the earlier boxes like the weight sectors. Uh, to protect the keys when they decide to start leaving the keys in the boxes to protect them from getting broken off on the street. Uh, what the, the individuals would have to do, the citizens would have to break the glass. This this door then will drop down and will allow access to the key. And I do have the fire department key here to open it. So we'll show you how that worked. The small key hole here would allow the glass uh, panel to drop down, open. Okay, like I said, this was the this was the first generation of the uh, instructional board, door boxes that were used in the city of Pittsburgh. And these could have two mechanisms in it. They can have the earlier weight sector mechanism, like we talked about earlier, or they have this mechanism, which is called a spring sector. From the door, it looks very similar. Still uses the word hook instead of handle, has the long pull down on it. And what that pull down does is it actually winds the spring up here in the back when you pull it down. So it's not a it's basically a wind as you need it box. It's not holding tension, so this is still an earlier box. Uh, like I said, around these were made by the Peerless Company for a game wall around 1916. Okay, the next box in the evolution of the fire alarms used in the city of Pittsburgh is the uh, more common instructional door. This is the 1917 to early to mid 20s instructional door box. And like I said in the first one, you've seen all the clutter with the words done, and it still said hook. Well, in this case, they changed, they took the word da out in these two spots here, thought it was too much clutter for the box door and instructions, and they replaced the word hook with handle. That indicates a little bit of a, a later box. Same idea, they break the glass here on the front panel and would uh, expose, now they went from a, a standard skeleton key to a T-bone handle. They called it a dog bone handle. You would turn that, open up the door, and now you see the slightly newer mechanism as well, using the word handle in place of hook. And this mechanism is a peerless mechanism that is actually wound and maintains its tension all the time. Uh, there's two ways to do it. This folding winder that was left on a lot of the boxes where the fire department had to carry a winder key that looks similar to this that they would wind the boxes up with every time they were pulled. And this box maintains the tension on it all the time. You pull the hook down and releases it and this spring now in case the fireman forget to wind it that springs good for about 14 pulls of the box before it winds itself down and once again this is post 1916 or 1917 fire alarm box used by the city of pittsburgh all right now getting into a little more modern evolution of the boxes in the city of pittsburgh this one here recognized by the the bullseye glass which is not in this box currently had a bullseye glass lens here on the door to expose the hook these came on the scene in around 1924. Uh, you see the patent date in the handle was January 1st of 24. They started making these boxes around 1922 or 1923, but they were actually not a solid door like this. They were like this box here. They had a full open panel that you put a piece of glass in. Uh, but Pittsburgh didn't have any of those 23 style boxes that I have seen or heard of. They went straight to this 24 box. And this box had what was called a three fold mechanism in it where uh, you open that up, you have the inner door. And this once again, like the, the newer style boxes that we talked about earlier, is a box that is always wound and it's good for so many pulls. It's good for about 14 pulls. And the fire will wind it right there using that T-handle after every response to that box. These boxes also, they were not interfering. They have non-interfering coil, so they can't, they'll wait their line in line. They'll wait for the turn for the box to transmit if a second box is already transmitting. And they also have an auto grounding feature on them, which was a, a first for the city of Pittsburgh. If there were, was a line break or something like that, uh, this box would actually transmit the signal back through ground. So it only required one side of the circuit to still transmit the signal effectively, which is a very good feature to add. 
after a 24 box. Uh, that, that box was probably the longest running box in, in the city's history. The uh, game wall made that box from 24 until this newer style box right here came out in 1951. This box has a very similar mechanism in it. And this is the exact box and mechanism that the city of Pittsburgh would use for the master box locations inside the buildings around the buildings. As you can see, there's a local energy master box trip coil on it. So the box can function as a street pull box. Somebody can still pull down the hook. But this box would have been tied into the buildings and would have automatically tripped when the building's alarm went off. This trip bar would flip over and pull the hook down, transmit the box. And these boxes in the city of Pittsburgh, not, not always, but at least the newer ones, the later ones, were primarily uh, 9 series box, started with the number 9. Okay, so now we're going to talk briefly about the alarm apparatus used by the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, this is a punch register, uh, aka ticker tape or a joker. And this particular one is one of the early ones that would have been used in the city, both in the Allegheny and the city of Pittsburgh systems. And these early ones actually punched circle punches in the paper and required a cup to catch the punches and made a big mess. Uh, that's a one inch size and then this one here is a half inch size. The one inch was the more common uh, for the fire stations to use. They, went, they later switched to a triangle punching box uh, around 1920. Which is this one here you can see it has a sharp edge it punches a triangle in the paper that would indicate direction because the underwriters laboratory kind of had a bone to pick with the fire alarm companies at that time in history they said if we have a bunch of circles on a paper you take them off the reel who's to say that the guy that rolled, rolled up the paper didn't roll it up backwards so there's no real record of you know in, in this case here i have box 511 uh or excuse me 611 so in this case the underwriter's laboratory said, okay, is this box 611 or is it box 116? Which direction was this tape moving when this alarm was received? So they switched to the triangle punch around 1920. Okay, next up on the uh, receiving mechanisms, this was an early six inch direct tapping gong that was made by the Gainwell Company. Uh, just prior and shortly after the turn of the century, they made this model. And these would have been used in a lot of the fire stations, maybe in the kitchens or the back rooms, uh, where they would have bigger gongs out in the truck rooms, which would either be, this is a six inch game wall Excelsior gong, uh, oak cased, these type of gongs would have been out in the truck rooms, or in later years, uh, you see a lot of them still in the city stations, the big 10 inch chain wine gong made by game well, where it didn't require a key to wind it, you would just pull this chain down on the bottom to wind the, the gong whenever it wound down. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do a demonstration now show you how a box would have came in back in the day. So this is uh, City of Pittsburgh Box 625, which is the weight-driven sector mechanism from around 19, or excuse me, 1880. We're going to go ahead and pull the hook down, which will take the weight to the top of the box and release it. Over here to the register, you punch in the box room. So a six, a space, a two, a space, and a five, indicating the box six two five is not working. See the going going. Also taps out the box number. As well as the tapper bell on the bottom of the box will also uh, tap whatever any activities on the circuit. That is for the fire chief or the his designee to communicate back with the central office at a fire alarm. So they're out on this box, say there's a fire and they want a second alarm. They would come over to this box and they would use the manual tapper here. They would tap twice, which will then be answered by the central office, would tap twice back saying they're ready to receive the second alarm. And then they would go ahead and pull the box again, and that would indicate I want a second alarm to box number 625. And dispatch would go ahead and pull that card and put that second alarm in. As far as the first alarm, these boxes would only talk to the central office directly. All the circuits to the, the bell circuits to the houses were all direct direct bell circuits from the central office. Uh, the more the later years, there was one central office that was in the city county building. 
and I actually have a, that's where my set of run cards came from was from that office so we'll show you how they would have taken an arm in so the central office would have got four rounds of box 625 on their register as we sh as we showed in ours over here they would have went in the drawer and pulled out the card for that box which I have here in my hand box 625 intersection of rural and St. Clair streets uh, you see the alarms across the top so it would be engine 8 28 36 hook and ladder company 8 and chief 3 will be due on the first alarm now if I went like I said, and had, had to transmit as the fire chief a second alarm to this box, they would simply go down to the second line, would send engine 6, 16, uh, there is no second ladder on the second alarm, and they would add two chiefs to it, as well as the second alarm transfers here. Uh, and you can see down, down through the sequence of how they would add those and, and so on.